Well, how do that, chums? As I, Captain of the Steve, and today, chums, I'm playing some No Man's Sky. When I say I'm playing some No Man's Sky, this is a review of the No Man's Sky Expeditions, the Voyagers. So, yes, firstly, I'm going to start at the end. So, I'm going to show you the rewards so you can see what rewards you get inside of this expedition. Let's jump on over into game. So, something that I really like with the actual rewards is these sort of pop up tents because you can fit in a teleporter into one of these tents. The only thing I don't like about them is they have to be placed on very flat land, else the legs sort of just hover above the air like this. It's a shame that there's not better placement for them to actually sit under the terrain. Even here where I'm trying to put one nice and flat, it just, it's a bit immersion breaking, it's a bit janky, but it's a pop-up base, which I kind of like. It kind of works. But you know those sort of like little mud huts that we got years ago? I think they work better as a pop-up base, just because they sit in the terrain a bit better. But anyways, I really like them. They're really quite cool. Now, heading into here, I'm going to show you the decals that you get, and also some other base parts. These base parts are these robot limbs. And what I like about these is they spark, and they've got little flames coming off of them and stuff, and smoke effects. I'm fairly sure people are going to be able to make some pretty jazzy stuff with those and they all move they're very well animated and you can scale them which is pretty darn lovely now the actual decals themselves let's just pop into camera mode let me just show you the decals so there you go there's the expedition type logo pretty nice logo that one fairly happy with that this is quite jazzy it's got very sort of Starfield-esque sort of vibe going on though, hasn't it? With the colour scheme and the graphical style. It's very, it's very Starfield. This next one, again, I really like that. It's got a very retro-esque type vibe to it. It kind of mirrors into the actual badge itself. I like that one. That, that looks like an album cover or something, doesn't it? That'd be a nice t-shirt print, in fact. That'd be good merch. And then we've got this over here, which is for the actual droids and stuff like that. Well, I quite like, quite like that one. Looks all right, droid-ish anyway. It's more of a traveler, actually, come to think of it, people. But yeah, very nice, very snazzy. I like the decal. So the decal are nice the robot parts are nice the pop-up tents are great let's have a look at the robot egg because yes i can hatch him now i haven't hatched it i haven't looked at this this is going to be my first impressions of this people live here we go hatch egg chicka pow yep there we go oh hello mate you're right okay uh, oh, okay, so you have to feed it and stuff, gently patch it. Oh, it eats iron batteries. You can't ride it by the looks of things, but it will lay an egg. Okay, so at least it's something we can put into the old giveaway or whatever. Let's give him a little pet, give him another little treat. There you go, are you happy? I wonder what he poos out. I mean, I've just fed him iron batteries. Maybe we get chewy wires, I don't know. But yeah, there he goes, meow. That's um, pretty jazzy as far as pets go, I guess. Yeah, it's all right. It's okay. It's like that uh, movie um, without batteries or whatever it was. Yeah, there we are. I mean, he's flying off, doing his own thing. Lights change colours by the looks of things as well. Pretty awesome. Let's have a look at him in night mode, shall we? Let's have a look at him at night time. Yeah, there you go. He's got a nice, a nice little sort of light that he's going to bring along with him. So you know what? Not a bad pet. Not the worst pet in the world, not the best pet in the world, but it's fun. It would look good if I was in my droid mode and perhaps riding on a droid pet as well, wouldn't it? That kind of completes the ensemble. Eh? So you know what? The actual um, rewards this time, they're pretty good. I wouldn't say that they were as good as the Golden Vector or previous prizes with inside of the expedition. But what do I think of the actual expedition people in the view of us? Well, we get to that, peeps. Right, Charles, well, this next part of the review is also going to be probably the best tips guide for this actual expedition. I might do this as a separate video segment as well. But yeah, I really like these wonder sort of projectors. Now, if I head on over to this, this is the unwelcomed milestone. If you want the unwelcome milestone, there's the actual portal address for the unwelcomed. Fuck yours, people. Now, what I've got and done is I've put the planet here and the actual objective or the thing that you scan behind it. So, yeah, if we go into here, we go into this one here. So this, I'll oh, budge off. Okay, mate. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna despawn him because he's a pain in the freaking backside. Oh, for fudge sake. I want to just get rid of him. Go away. Okay, right. So, here we go. So, this is Hooves of Thunder. So, yeah, here's the actual planet for Hooves of Thunder. Let me hit that one up. Boom. And Hooves of Thunder. There's the actual portable address for Hooves of Thunder. Now, I've done this with all of them. For the Corrosive Blood, now, this one has actually got 3.0 Corrosive Blood, and it has to be 
2.1 it has to be pretty much bang on for the actual milestone to pop at the moment so there's a bit of a bug with it so most corrosive blood that's where i found my most corrosive blood creature on the planet there you can see the portal address there excellent eh? and the next one hunter killer was this creature and i found it on this planet right here i might have to move myself out of the way for that one might tonight people yeah i'm gonna have to move myself off the screen for a second one minute and uh, i will do that in a click of a button there you go boom there you go hopefully you can see that portal code now and the last one is hot blooded which is this sort of creature over here and i found it on that planet there now these are all in eisentam the whole freaking thing takes place in eisentam doesn't it so there you go people there's all your portal codes for the hardest to find planets and the hardest to find creatures now some of the things to note here okay so the hot blooded creature wasn't found on like one of the hottest planets it wasn't on a lava world no it wasn't on a planet that has like you know the solarium on it no it wasn't it was on this planet here which happens to be let me just go back into there sometimes i press the wrong button on these things to view the display you have to press triangle it was actually on a cactus flesh world cactus flesh world and it didn't look like it was going to be super hot there's no activated in there no nothing so it really was a jaunt and a half to find the hot-blooded creature. It really was, people. It, 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 was, it was tricky as. And that goes the same for a lot of them. I mean, like, this one took me freaking ages to find. In the end, it was one of Scottish Rod videos that helped me with that one, the unknown -y type one, the unwelcomed one. That was freaking hard. I mean, let, let's have a look at this planet type because it was one of those sort of weird planets, people. It's Look, there we go. Gamma root. There we are. Irradiated. Yeah. I had no idea that that was going to be it and it apparently it was so yeah that's that planet anyhow peeps hold on i just need to just top up my old um uh, hazardy protection there people boom done dilly and done and it's the same with a lot of these creatures that i found they, they didn't seem to fit the biome that the actual text suggested it was going to be so hunter killer oh yeah that's fine i mean there's one of the actual rendezvous planets where these creatures will attack you anyway and you're going to get that anyhow so it's all good but yeah there you go that's that's pretty much that what i would say it was very tedious in finding the actual planets to make these things pop and what didn't really help was the write-up in the expedition land on a toxic planet land on a super hot planet i landed on loads of toxic planets i landed on loads of super hot planets didn't find them it was just as i was casually going around during the expedition path that they popped and it was by sheer freaking fluke and chance i reckon people and it, you almost feel like you have to go on every single planet to get this thing to work yeah and then there was the bugged out ones like the ph blood one and that's still a problem right now people it really is so it was quite a long-winded expedition uh let's go into the old catalog but i do like the fact that it showed off how to use the wonders i do like the actual rewards that you got i mean they're not the best but they're not then you know but i really like these wonder things they're really quite cool to showcase stuff so i am liking the new wonders and this was a good expedition to show those off also we've had quite a lot of combat type updates so far people in the verse haven't we we've had a lot to do with sentinels and the echoes this was just pure exploration okay now it took me a good six hours to do this expedition um now that i know what i'm doing i probably would have done it very differently i probably would just use my freighter call in my freighter and use the scanner on the freighter to scan everything that's probably the better way to do it and in all fairness when you actually have the write-up at the very start of this it says voyage along the stars in your freighter yeah, I missed that line of text. I just did it in my starship. It might have been easier to get the scanner installed early part of this expedition on board my freighter, jump systems and scan the whole system. The only thing is you can only take your freighter into the yellow star systems at the start. So to get it into red and blue and green systems, you're going to have to do that in your ship to get the tech then to put in your freighter because you need the actual resources, the cadmium to go to red systems, which you only can do in your ship. So it's a bit of a hybrid one this one they needed to gift you more emerald uh, uh, idiom and cadmium as rewards for that to work pretty much people and um, but yeah anyways it seemed to be a very disjointed very padded very frustrating and tedious expedition i would say it's probably the most tedious frustrating one so far to date people inside of the viewer verse i really would it it's it's I wouldn't say it was fun, but then perhaps the way that I was doing it wasn't fun. 
Because I'm making the content, I want to get the videos out nice and quick, and also Starfield has just dropped in early access for those that sort of pre-ordered, I wanted to get this done as quickly as I possibly could, and that just isn't feasible. It's just not really possible. They've put a two-month limit on this one, and I think they've done that on purpose, people in the viewerverse, because they want it to last. They want people to enjoy it and take it all the way up to the end date, which is quite an interesting end date, people inside the viewerverse. It really is. So yes, the end date for this one takes us all the way up to Halloween. Now considering that a lot of the actual updates that we've had recently have been around the Void Mother, around the Realm of Glass, about the Void, about creepy stuff taking place inside of our verse, I honestly think we might see something bigger this year around Halloween. Although that we got quite a lot delivered in in the last update, which was a great update, if you haven't seen my review on the latest update, I gave it a 9 out of 10. I would probably revise that now though. You know, I thought it would have more shelf life with the old staffs and swapping parts with friends, but it's actually more fun to build your own staff. It feels more personal. And also the staff itself, it still feels a bit janky. I think I would revise that down. I'd probably put it more as a 7.4, to be honest, people. And I know that's a big drop. That's a freaking large drop. But it just doesn't have the longevity, the lifespan that I thought it would have on initial inspection. I thought we'd be finding those Alantid and Atlas multi-tools for time to come, but I'm finding that they only come in two blinking colours, black or grey, or an occasional red one. And they don't really feel like they're aligned to the Atlantid. They, they feel more Atlasy to me. Uh, even though they call them the Atlantid multi-tools, they don't feel very Atlantid-like. And considering that we've activated these portals to go all purple and stuff, I would have expected a few purple variants to be in the mix. It's just me. But anyway, peeps, yeah, I would I would um, retrograde my review of the old um, the whole update that we just had. Although that is great and gives a lot of variety in being a robot and all that sort of stuff. There's a lot of people that don't really care if they're a robot or not. I'm kind of in the mix with that. I'm kind of sticking with my normal character inside of the Gek armor. That's, that's kind of what I like to roll as. I do like the variant, but at the same time, it, it's a little late in the game. I think for a new player picking it up, they're going to love it. And also the fact that they brought in end content, I think they're going to love it. Anyway, this is a review of the expedition. The expedition, I found it a little bit tedious, a little bit um, mind-numbing. But at the same time, I was trying to rush it. I think this one you need to take your time. I think to really enjoy this, you need to take your time. And I think, again, it's going to be unfair for me to review it and give it my score. I mean, it's just my own personal opinion, but I would say this was probably one of the most tedious and most frustrating expeditions to date. And in its release state, with the bugs that it's got, considering that there's a couple of progress blockers in this one, the pH blood being the worst, I'm going to give it. I'm going to give it about a four. I'm going to give it a four out of ten. And I know that seems very, very harsh, but I think this one was below average. Average is five. Okay, so it's just below average, and that's where I'm pegging it. A four out of ten. If it didn't have that bug, and if I took my time with it and just focused on exploration, because exploration is one of my favourite things anyway, and if I set out my little my little wonders and things and done it done it how probably you're supposed to do it. I think I would score this a bit higher. I think I would score it probably a six or a seven, but it's still not the echelons of the higher, the higher states. Anyway, people, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.